Hello, it's Rob from Fountain Pen Journey. Thought I'd do a face to face video today. Um, interesting topic. Uh, I mean, in some ways, this is purely for my own reference as much as anything else. Uh, two years ago, pretty much to the day, I began my fountain pen journey. Now, it's been for me quite an interesting one. I haven't been recording YouTube videos. Sorry, just knocked all the tripod. Wait for this to stop bouncing around so you don't get all seasick. Um, I haven't been recording and making YouTube videos all of those two years. Um, I have been certainly using and collecting fountain pens though, and I've learned quite a lot on the way. So, I'm just going to talk about where I started and where I'm at now and how I got here, and perhaps also what the future might hold for my fountain pen journey. Um, first off, I'm going to state my first pen. If you go all the way back through my videos, you'll see the first one, I think possibly the first one, was in fact a um, quick introduction to my fencing pen journey, during which I discussed my first pen, which was a Jin Hao 1200, also known as the Jin Hao Dragon Pen, in the silver finish, not the gold finish, which you still quite often see. Um, and that kind of got me started on fountain pens. Why did I get into fountain pens? Just to recap, once again, I happened to come across a uh, tech review website where the guy reviews all sorts of gadgets and mobile phones, computers, stuff like that. And he happened to mention that he'd picked up a brilliant fountain pen on Amazon for £10. It was the Jin Hao, Dr Jin Hao Dragon Pen. I was really intrigued. I thought, I hate fountain pens, but that looks really, really good. It looks really neat. I'll give it a go. And I went on there and suddenly realised that there's actually other Jin Hao fountain pens, all of which are very cheap, most of which are very cheap. Um, and that was pretty much the start of it. I also wanted to get into fountain pens as well, that I never realised too much at the time, but I really... I, I, I don't like being restricted in ink colour. Black and blue, black and blue biros don't do it for me. Um, I wanted to use green pens at work for certain things. I do a lot of, as I've discovered, um, bullet journaling or bullet type journaling, and I wanted to use some other ink colours. So it was quite important for me to think about, you know, using fountain pens with ink cartridges, and then I discovered the world of bottled inks, and then that, in, well, in turn turned into a whole different journey. So, I'm just going to briefly discuss sort of where I started um, on this journey, and that was, as I mentioned, the Jin Hao Dragon Pen, and I collected one or two Jin Hao fountain pens. And way back in... Oh, to be honest, it would have been probably August, August, September, uh, back in 20... Hang on, wait a minute, where are we now? 2019, 2017. Um, I think I probably came across Bauer as a brand, um, and bought maybe one of their pens, one or two of their pens. Probably also discovered some of the other YouTubers, um who do fountain pen reviews, I think specifically, um, probably Matt from the Pen Habit, uh, Matt Armstrong, he was quite a big influence on my collecting behaviour because um, he really did do quite a lot of good reviews of cheap pens, like the Jin Hao X450, which he certainly back then did enjoy using, as I do today. Um, so I'm thankful for these uh, these other YouTubers who have encouraged me and, um, and inspire me to use fountain pens and try out different things. So way back then, two years ago, Jin Hao, that was my um, that was my brand. I wasn't likely to collect anything else. Um, I didn't know anything about fountain pens. They just happened to be an affordable um, option in good colours, in a good range of sizes, shapes, materials, if you like, and I thought I'd be a Jin Hao collector. I soon realised that Jin Hao makes 
way too many different fountain pens and have produced way too many different fountain pens over the years that there's no point collecting them. Um, if you did try to collect them all, yeah, that would be quite a mission. Um, good luck to you if you're going to go with that. Um, but I found that some of the Jinhao pens, they wrote a little bit dry, a little bit of ink starvation. It wasn't great and... I loved writing with these fountain pens, so it was the early days, loved, loved the experience, loved the different inks, loved the smoothness, but I thought maybe maybe I'm going to have to start thinking about uh, trying something a bit different, a bit newer, a bit better. Um, and I think that around that sort of time, that was when I started to collect willy-nilly, anything at all. Um, I think some people, when they start collecting and using fountain pens, probably do end up in that situation. Um, and it happened to me fairly quickly. And I tried all sorts of different pens. I was buying anything that was unusual. And when you start this hobby, or this obsession, whatever you want to call it, um, I think it's quite easy just to go, right, oh, that, that's nice, that's cheap, that's different. Everything looks different when it's new. So you end up buying all sorts of random stuff. Uh, and I, I, I sort of lost my way. Um, for a little while I bought all sorts of different brands, tried out different things, some of which were good, some of which weren't. Um, just on that subject, I'll just mention, uh, mention that Wingsong, yep, love Wingsong pens. Moonman pens, mm, not too good. Completely missed pen BBS for probably the best part of a year and a half. Um, I don't know how, but I did. Uh, I did actually buy one probably a year ago. Never used it because it was a Hawaiian finish. In fact, I've got it here. There we go. The Hawaii finish, which, to be honest, is really lovely. It's very summery. Um, bought this pen, never used it. And the simple reason being that I had so many other things that I wanted to use and it was all new and exciting and this, because it came in its own box, got forgotten about and popped in a drawer. I've recently been using other uh, Pen BBS pens and I mean, you'll recognize, the, recognize these two from my recent videos. Um, so they're still in my daily pen rotation. Just refilled them yesterday, actually. Uh, so yeah, re uh, just, just discovered pen BBS recently. Um, so way back in the early stages of my fountain pen journey, I really did concentrate on Chinese fountain pens, mainly because they are usually very, very inexpensive. The quality of their of the Chinese uh, modern pens is pretty good um i'm not saying it's excellent because you know there's not many pen <laughs> pens which are excellent especially not when you're only paying a dollar a pound or something like that for a pen you're not going to expect it to be absolutely amazing but there are some good ones i mean two years on jinhao 51a been using this pen for well over 12 months and the other colour variants, hooded nib, absolutely love it. Extra fine nib, brilliant for work purposes, writes on pretty much any rubbish paper. Um, you will get some bleed through but you know for just using it in the office it's great. These are great pens so still using gin house two years on. Um, I then started after the initial stages of collecting that every Chinese fountain pen I could find to start, start trying to pin things down. And I thought, yep, I'm going to be a collector. My wife knows that I like old things. I love the 20th century. I was born back then. Um, the 20th century has all sorts of history, all sorts of art, all sorts of styles, which I like pretty much all of them. I find the 20, 20th century history and art is quite amazing. Um, uh, it's, not, it's not just nostalgic, it's something that I can actually relate to. Um, and for that reason I really really like the look and design of Pelican 
fountain pens, and yep, pelicans feature heavily in my collection. But I find they're all a little bit expensive, so I've got quite a lot of antique or vintage um, Pelican M100s, M200s, things like that. But I haven't really broadened out into Pelican as a brand. Um, I know some people absolutely love their nibs, the gold nibs and the steel nibs. I've got both, and quite honestly, I've never been 100% impressed with them. I don't know why, but just not really my sort of thing. So whilst I still love pelicans, pelican pens, um, incidentally I'm off to the uh, one of the UK hubs in September, Pelican Hubs, that's coming up, which I'm really excited about. It's probably going to be my first fountain pen meeting and uh, it's a worldwide event, so if you're into pelican fountain pens, I suggest that you find out about this for next year. Registration closed in, I don't know, middle of June. 2018 um, so you need to register with Pelican to get the mailing updates and then when you get the email then you have to register with the hub and choose a hub that's near you and that sort of thing so anyway but if you're into Pelican fountain pens and you haven't done it you need to do it because it's great apparently it's my first one so I don't know what I'm gonna really expect but I know I'm gonna really enjoy it so that's coming up in September so that's you know, another big step for my fountain pen journey, attending um, that type of event. Uh, it's a pelican, yeah. I thought I'd be collecting pelican pens, but I've never really been massively... I mean, their they're, nibs are good, but I've never been massively impressed with their nibs in the pens that I've got. So I kind of grew a bit, I don't know, disheartened. Then, last year... A bit of a revelation. Let's pick it out. There we go. This thing entered my life. If you don't recognise it, Lamy 2000. Icon. An amazing pen. I bought one on eBay in an auction um, for an extremely low price. The pen was basically broken and um, and I thought, oh what the hell, I'll bid on it and see whether I can find replacement spares, things like that for it. Um, and this pen, yeah, it came and it had a, basically what would happened is the cap had cracked. I think it had split and it had basically got splits down one or both sides of the cap. I don't know whether the cap had actually been sort of like crushed down like that or whether somebody had tried to pass it onto the pen and then completely rammed it home and it split. Don't know, but the cap was wrecked. Um, so I thought it should be easy enough to find a Pelican, a uh, Pelican, a Lamy uh, 2000 cap. No, it isn't. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Um, I really, really struggled. However, I went on to one of the fountain pen forums, it's probably fountain pen network, when I did a Google search and they recommended getting in touch with Pelican. Uh, no, Pelican. Sorry, Pelican. I've moved on. I'm on Lamy now. This is Lamy. I'm talking about Lamy. So they recommended getting in touch with Lamy, which I did. Um, not expecting much, but I basically approached them and said, look, I have this pen, it's got a broken cap, please can you supply me with a new cap for Alarmy 2000, that's all I need, and I'm um, very happy to, uh, to you know, pay and just let me know what you want, what you need, and didn't hear anything for a few days, and then suddenly I got a email from Alarmy, which I must admit was a little bit difficult to decipher. But basically it said, please can you send the whole pen, all of it, to us in Germany, and we'll look at it for you. Okay, fair enough. Broken cap, you know. Um, so off it went, and I thought, well, you know, send it registered post, hope for the best, I haven't paid a lot for the pen, who knows what Lamy's going to say. And then took a couple of weeks, and the pen appeared back in the post. Now, when I say the pen, basically what they'd done, they'd serviced it for me. Um, they hadn't just replaced the cap. 
Obviously, there was a brand new cap, but they had completely disassembled the entire pen. And these, apparently, if you watch videos on YouTube, these things are an absolute nightmare to dis disassemble and assemble. But it's a well-engineered pen. I mean, there is a lot going on inside this thing. It isn't just a piston-turning knob with a blind cap and a piston and a plunger and nib. It, there's all sorts going on inside these things. It... It's a work of art, if you're really interested. Um, so, minimalistic design, hell of a lot going inside, going on inside. And Lamy took it all apart, serviced it, greased things up, replaced piston rings, did this, did that, everything else. Um, and gave me a new cap, cleaned the pen out, did all sorts of stuff. And sent it back to me, with documentation, and essentially what was an overhauled or in my, my mind, a brand new sort of pen. They had done an absolutely amazing job, and they hadn't charged me for it. They hadn't charged me a penny. They'd just done it as a goodwill gesture. Now, there aren't many companies that I know in this era now, where we are, where that level of customer service would exist. It was fantastic. And because of that, I immediately thought, you know, hey, am I missing out on something here? So now, I've got a really, really big collection of Lamy pens. Not all the ranges, you know, not all the fancy things, all the emporiums and things like that, but I do have, you know, about Lamy 2000, Lamy All-Stars, All-Stars and Safaris, classic 1980s design, when I first got into fountain pens, looked at these and thought, "Ugh, oh, these things are hideous. I mean, it looks like it should have been left in the 80s. But then I wrote with a few, and they're so cheap that, you know, they've got generic steel nibs. You try the nibs and maybe one out of every ten is a bit duff, uh, so it needs some nib work, brand new I'm talking about, um, which is not bad for a mass-produced pen. And in my fountain pen journey, I've actually got quite confidence in doing minor nib work. I don't have any issues with, you know, flossing tines with back brass shim, using micro mesh, you know, smoothing, perhaps even grinding things down a bit, checking time alignment, all these little key things which are absolutely essential to fountain pen use. Um, I've learned, I've taught myself. Uh, some things I've picked up off YouTube, but a lot of it is just trial and error. And I've only actually made a mess of one pen doing it. And it was fortunately a, uh, I think that was a gin now. <laughs> so I've not exactly uh, lost a lot in that little experiment, but I learned from it. So, moved on to Lamy's. Great little pens. Love them. Really, really good pens. Um, hate the converters, by the way. I've actually started using Lamy cartridges and um, and cleaning them out, reusing the cartridges because the converters are so rubbish. Lamy really, I don't know what's happened to them. Some of the converters I've got, the, I don't know, Z24, uh, whatever it, model number it is these days, the converters don't, I don't know, the basic, has this got a converter in it? Let's just have a look. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, these converters here. I'm finding that cleaning them out is an absolute nightmare because you push the plunger down and there's ink residue all behind the plunger and you can't you can't clean it out. You can you can't get rid of it. So no no matter how many times you flush it, you've still got ink residue in there. Awful, awful converters. Don't get that with a gin how. So anyway, Lamy. Lamy is my brand. Um, I love Pelicans, but. Lamy customer care, customer service, and their pens kind of clinched it for me, so that they're now a big part of my fountain pen journey. Um, what else can I talk about? I mean, I've already discussed basically self teaching myself how to smooth and you know make nibs wetter, that type of thing, essential stuff. Um, inks. I now have lots and lots of inks. An awful lot of teal inks, an awful lot of green inks, because I do quite like those. Um, 
and yeah it's a time consuming hobby because I love writing I love writing with the pens um, I love trying out different inks so one learning point if you if you're starting your own fountain pen journey don't buy every bottle of ink you can um, you will end up with dozens and dozens of bottles very quickly um, what I would recommend and this is honestly this is honest honest advice and I wish that I'd pick this up sooner because it's something that I've only started doing relatively recently in the last six months buy ink samples it's easy to buy a bottle of ink thinking it's only a 50 milliliter bottle you'll get through it it's amazing I have still got ink bottles from two years ago which are nowhere near empty I started off using Waterman Intense Black Mysterious Blue and Harmonious Green and Audacious Red and I still use all four of those inks an awful lot at work however not one of them not one of the bottles is still less than half full they are all full they, ink bottles last forever um, I think you've really got to start painting with ink or drawing or doing something quite extreme to uh, to get through ink that way. But I will just state, if you're starting off, don't mass, don't amass a huge ink collection. Get yourself some ink samples. I mean, I, I've I've used all sorts of ink samples recently, and there's some inks that I just would. I just never ever buy so the cost of an ink sample I don't know call it a pound you know you can do usually at least one fill probably two um, fills which is a good way of uh, in a pen to try out an ink and it's the most cost effective way because you, then at least you can test the ink you can see what it looks like see how it behaves and see whether you like it what you don't want to do is think well that looks like a nice colour buy a bottle and then you end up with yet another black, yet another blue, yet another green. You'll never get through all these inks. Please don't make that mistake. I see ink collections on YouTube where people have got basically a room full of boxes and boxes of inks. You're never going to get through it. So, you know, I've seen Facebook groups, fountain pen Facebook groups, where people are trying to get rid of their old ink collections that they've had for years, and you know they've opened the bottle and maybe taken two or three fills out of the bottle, so the bottle's basically brand new but several years old. And you know what do you do with it? Well, to be honest, you know I I, I don't know. You're better off with ink samples. Buy bottles of ink, or cartridges, or small bottles of ink for the inks that you really really do love buy them for the everyday stuff um, but don't buy huge quantities of ink just for the sake of it because you're never going to get through it in a lifetime <laughs> fountain pens are surprisingly economical with ink um, so yeah that is something however with all this in mind when I started on my fountain pen journey I thought the best option for me from fountain pen use was probably to try using medium nibs. And all of the Jinhao pens that I bought way back then had medium nibs. Um, it, it was just the thing. And I liked it and I said, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, medium, this seems to be the right line width for me. Uh, it suits my writing style, very happy with it, nice wet pens, smooth, all the rest medium and then of course I bought more and more Chinese fountain pens which in general come with fine or extra fine nibs Wing Song 3008 very good pen great pen really really great pen um, comes with a fine nib not a lot you can do about that comes with a fine nib so recently I've bought some nibs which came in uh, medium 1.1 millimeter 1.5 millimeter and 1.9 millimeter and I've replaced the nibs the fine nibs on these pens with those broader nibs because I've discovered in all the 
time, year and a half or more, I've been using hands like this Jinhao 51A with its extra fine nib. Great on rubbish paper, but I like a really, really wet pen and I like the smooth writing experience that you get from a broader nib. So medium, yeah, great. But then why stop at medium? So I've, been, I've developed my taste and I've kind of got into tractor and trailers to go past it's harvest season around here uh, country's a busy place this time of year so yeah I've gone for much broader nibs only relatively recently probably about well certainly this last six months um, so yeah I'm really loving broader nibs these days I mean for example I've been doing some um, some ink notes today this is going to be back to front, isn't it? Yeah, that's completely unreadable. But hey, that's what happens when you're using the uh, reverse camera mode on this thing. <laughs> so you never read that, but you get the gist. Really, really broad, thick lines. This is a uh, shade for no nonsense uh, with a bold italic, bold, broad italic nib. Um, so yeah, really, really loving the broader nibs. And as a result, they're thirsty. Makes the uh, makes the uh, ink use go right up through the roof. So I'm finding that with using broader nibs, I need more ink. So little piddly bottles of ink aren't doing it for me now. So with certain inks that I really love, and things like this gin, uh, this Wingsong uh, 3008, holds a good, I don't know, a few milliliters um, piston fill. Really, really good ink, cap ink capacity. Perfect for using with this. I don't know what we've got in here. I think this is the one point. I'm pretty certain this is a one point five millimeter. Uh, yeah, I'll go with one point five. One point five millimeter nib in there. So, if you're going to buy loads of ink, then make sure that you're going to use it up because there's nothing worse than having an ink collection that just sits there gathering dust for years because you're not enjoying it all you're doing is trying new bottles of ink so try to buy ink samples just a really useful tip that i wish i'd have picked up on earlier um i'll just talk about my uh, current situation with the fountain pens i have in front of me um a range of pens all of which are inked up and all of which I use on a well daily rotation basis. So every one of these pens will get used at least once a week. Um, obviously, we've spoken about the Wingsong 3008, Lamy 2000, Lamy All Star, Pen BBS. Model number completely escapes me. It's an early one. Schaefer. No nonsense. Shave no nonsense. Shave no nonsense. Seeing another collecting trend here? Yes, I do love the shave no nonsense. It is exactly that. It is a no nonsense fountain pen. It's classic. It's not you. Well, I'm not going to say boring. It's not your bog standard cigar shape. Flat top, flat ends. Screw cap, usually. Um, this one isn't. This is more of a calligraphy uh, pen and nib. Uh, pushed into a no-nonsense body. Decent round clips. No white dot. It's not that type of lifetime guarantee shafer. Decent clips. Good ink capacity. You can eyedropper them. I haven't eyedroppered any of these pens because the cartridges are quite generous. So, yeah, Schaefer No Nonsense has become a bit of a thing for me. Uh, Jin Hao 301, 301, Diamond Hat. Two of those, Marble Black, Marble Blue. I've already seen the uh, two Pen BBS pens, which I've been using for months now. Keep filling them up. Love these pens. Uh, See Caveco's Caveco Sport, the Ice Sport, this uh, orange Ice Sport, yellow Ice Sport, 
love these pens. Absolutely love them. I have always got at least one of these pens in my everyday carry or pen rotation and or pen rotation that I have at home in my copy pen mug. So, yeah, they're always around. The Wingsong 3008. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, another shade for no nonsense. Uh, oh, the <clears throat> Moonman Wankai Mini. Yes, this pen is a great little pocket pen. It holds a ton of ink, once again. This thing holds a lot of ink. It's got a fine nib. Lasts for, uh, last for ages. So, don't have to refill that one very often. Uh, let's get through... I'll just take out these remaining pens, because I'm trying to hold on to some sort of system with my ink notes. Pop that on there, out of the way. Right, okay, you saw the unboxing of this the other week. The Ranger. I don't even know what model number it is. I have to write all of this down, but this is... I'm just going to call this the Ranger Handmade Blue Fountain Pen for now. I actually used it for the first time last night and wow <laughs> this has got a broad nib when people say you'll hear the phrase it's like a fire hose it's a gusher when they're talking about nibs and pens i've never experienced it this pen is it this could put out fires this lays down so much ink it's like <laughs> there is tons of ink tons of ink going onto the paper absolutely amazing very very impressed with this so far i will do a review at some point watch this space uh right lamy 2000 clone i did a review and also a comparison video of these pens and the lamy 2000 in my channel go to the videos Scroll down, look for MSBH1, MSBH-1. There's a black version and a silver version. It's an all-metal, brushed metal pen. Looks, look, well, looks very, very similar to the Lamy 2000. Comes with a fine nib. These are good. Fraction of the price of the Lamy 2000. In my view, very different writing experience, but still very good. Definitely recommend you have a look at uh, getting hold of one of these if you're interested. Um, I'm not saying it's compar comparable to the Lamy 2000, but these pens are good. Definitely worth a look. So have a look at my uh, review and comparison videos of the MSBH1. Um, definitely worth checking out. Two more of my favourite pens. Black version, Imperial Blue version, Lamy Studio. I love this. It's not quite a 2000, but then again, it never was supposed to be. These are lovely, lovely, lovely pens. Really nice pens. I adore these, so yeah. Very, very happy with these. Both medium nibs. And oddity time. There's usually an oddity somewhere that I'm testing out. Brass fountain pen. That's what it was called. That's all it was called. Now, first impression obviously is that it is a brass version or ripoff of the Caveco All Sport brass. Um, as it happens, I would say that actually it looks more like somebody has ripped off the Delike Classic Alpha brass, which is a rip-off of the Caveco All Sport brass. Um, I bought several of these pens because I love the Caveco Sport. I haven't got a brass sport. Um, I like the colours of these. I think they're funky. Great little pocket pens. Very sturdy. Um, the price of the sport puts me off. So one of my first Chinese fountain pens when I started this journey was the Delight Classic Alpha. And I absolutely love those pens. I like, I like the acrylic finishes as much as the metal ones. Um, so yeah, 
I think I just like this style of pen a lot. So I saw these pens online. Um, in fact, I actually looked for them uh, specifically, typed in into eBay, brass fountain pen. Because I saw a inf bit of information, uh, I think it was on a, one of the fountain pen Facebook groups, where somebody had got a Jinhao X450 or X750, one of the metal pens, and basically used various chemicals and processes to strip all of the paintwork off the metal parts of the pen. So they got down to the bare metal, which seems to be brass, or some sort of alloy, goldish alloy, don't know what it is, but it seems to be brass, and then did some work on plating it, which looks absolutely fantastic. Now, I don't have the time and the patience to do that, However, I used to be quite into mineralogy and jewellery making. So I got quite handy doing little bits of metal work, metal texturing, metal finishing, things like that on certain substance, on certain metals. So I just had a quick type into eBay to try and find out what the cheapest brass fountain pens were so that I could mess around with this perhaps develop some new techniques, apply some of my jewellery making, metal finishing techniques to these raw brass fountain pens. Um, and as it happens I didn't get very far because I quite like these. Um, I've got this in this gloss, I don't know, I think it is lacquered. Um, it's, I, don't know, I don't know whether I'd say it's polished. I'd say that this is possibly lacquered. Um, so it's got this shiny, polished, lacquered finish. Uh, very, very shiny. Different to the Delight Classic Alpha Brass, which I love. Um, these brass pocket pens are also available in silver and matte finishes, things like that. They're all very similar. They don't happen to work quite as well as the Delight Classic Alpha. They are a bit of a letdown, but they're a fraction of that price. And that was already a cheap pen, so dirt cheap pens for messing around with um, and I haven't had the heart to take any grinding wheels, sanding wheels, brush wheels or any of the usual uh, things that I do to uh, to texture metal to any of these pens yet because I actually really quite like them so a bit of an inadvertent purchase which has ended up in my collection um, you will see these pens occasionally listed under the, under the name Irorita, I-R-A-U-T-I-A, -A, um, something like that. Um, so just Google Brass Fountain Pen, you'll find these babies. And the last pen which I have in my collection, uh, in my rotation rather, uh, at the moment, is the Twisby Go Smoke Finish. Been in use for many, many, many months. Um, I think these pens are great. This has got the medium nib. Uh, incidentally, my wife sat down at the uh, at the table here and had a quick play around because we've got all the pens out, all the bits of paper and inks and things, all sorts of stuff going on. And uh, she said, "Oh, I'll just kind of try some of your pens." Absolutely, yeah. Never going to stop anyone from learning to love fountain pens and nah, she hates them uh, <laughs> out of all of these pens all the ones that she tried the Twisby Go for her was the nicest one to write with she still prefers Byros but you can't please everybody all the time so interesting uh, how a non-fountain pen user actually preferred this out of all of the other ones you know Lamy 2000 well, me all star. Yeah, she quite like that. Likes the look of it, likes the colour, likes the triangular grip. I love this. I find these really comfortable pens. But she picked the Twisby Go out of all of these pens. This was her favourite to write with. So, interesting little experiment. No science involved, but hey, there we go. That's what happened. So, where am I now with my fountain pen journey? Well, I've got lots of pens, lots of inks. Um, paper I'm not really into. I've got quite a range of notebooks, different ones, but at the end of the day 
I write with pens all the time. I write with them at work on really, really poor quality paper. I mentioned the Jinhao 51A. Right, it's on quality, poor quality paper because of the f extra fine nib. Um, yeah, I, I, I use them all day at work. Uh, and I use them all day at home. Well, every day at home for pleasure. I enjoy writing all sorts of stuff down. Shopping lists even. I mean, you know. Can you put a note on the shopping list? Ooh, which pen shall I use? Which ink? You know, you've got all, all these different pens. <laughs> Great fun. Um, so... Fun colours. Get a lot of joy from this hobby. And I do these videos, you know, hope to, hopefully to encourage others to share this sort of love of fountain pens, inks, and perhaps papers. Um, I can't get into papers that much. I've got road, I've got my first rodeo pad downstairs. Still not tempted to use it. What am I using at the moment? Oxford Notebook. Why? Because it was cheap on Amazon. It's got four, I don't know what you call it, little symbols either corner of the page, which mean that you use your phone to scan the page and it digitises your notes using the Scribsy app. The Scribsy app doesn't work. It never has done. I've sent repeated emails to them and they said, oh, it's all right, we fixed it. And it works and they update it and it stops working again. So... That's been going on for ages, so yeah, I'm just churning through this because it's paper, you know. Write on it, pull it out, throw it. Recycle it, rather. Um, yeah, it's definitely farming season. Um, so yeah, I, I can't get into paper yet. Um, I will state also that I have some more pens here. Uh, which is a different sort of experience. Noodlers Ahabs, Iroquois, Carnolian Honey, Arizona, Bumblebee. Different finishes, all Noodlers Ahabs, all need a fix. Um, so I've got a quick fix for the Noodlers Ahab because I know that I experienced problems with them in the early days. Uh, of purchasing these and hated them um, I thought I just wasted money on them excuse me but these are good pens these are great flex pens so what I did have a look through my videos you'll look for you'll see Noodler's Ahab quick fix and it is a quick fix it doesn't take a lot of work or effort no specialist tools and you can have working fountain pens again so check that video out and that's pretty much all I'm going to say. That's where I've got to. Um, the Noodlers Ahab is perhaps the latest stage in my fountain pen journey because I like using the flex nibs. They're not the easiest things to write with, uh, but they go through a lot of ink. So I'm now using more ink than ever, which is strange because I thought I'd always end up using less and less. Uh, I'm using broader nibs, so I'm using more ink. Papers not really using different papers um, I'm using what I can lay my hands on and quite honestly I mean I've popped into let's have a look I was in a shop fairly recently Sainsbury's that was where I bought those ink cartridges that I reviewed recently check that one out in my videos um, yeah hard cover journalist notebook with ring bound lined pages lots of them how many pages are in here I haven't got the glasses no idea but it's a lot big old thick book of paper decent cover decent hardback cardboard cover ring bound I can make lots of notes and then just rip out the pages as and when I've finished with them this is going to keep me going for ages I'm not going to have any issues at all writing on this paper I don't know whether it's just the way that I write or something but you know I write on paper and I don't 
I don't, maybe I don't worry about bleed through and show through, feathering. I'll just write and, you know, they're the notes, these are the pens, these are the inks. I'm casual, take it easy, you know. Don't get worked up by the hobby, it's not worth it. It's enjoyable. Um, so, I mean, this, this notepad, Sainsbury's, two pounds. I bought notebooks in a sale recently from Moleskin, Rhodia, way, way, way less paper. It's like 46 pages or something for five quid. You know, well, I don't know. Loads of paper. Two quid. Does the same job. You can write on it. Won't be as pretty. Doesn't matter. It's something you tear out, throw away, recycle, you know. I'm not worked up about paper yet. I'm sure if I happen to use my Noodle is Ahabs on really, really good Clairefontaine paper or Rhodia paper with sheening inks, yeah, I might suddenly go, yes, I'm sold on this, but I'm not at that part of my fountain pen journey just yet, so paper's still to come. So thank you very much for watching. hope you'll continue to follow me on my fountain pen journey because there are still plenty of pens in my collection which I haven't spoken about yet. Um, I review pens and inks regularly so if you're interested then please do hit the subscribe button because then you get notified of when the new videos are coming out and all the rest of it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this two year on uh, video worthwhile. Um, maybe inspire you on your own fountain pen journey if you're just starting out and thank you very much for watching and i shall see you next time thanks bye